Hello, Peaceful Profits Nation. Chanel here with an exciting client spotlight episode for you today. So today we're talking to our client, Bradley Vinson. Bradley, welcome to the podcast. Hi. Yeah, thank you for having me. I'm, I'm excited to be here. We are looking forward to this conversation. So let me tell you all about Bradley. He is a dedicated husband to his better two-thirds, father of three, and grandfather to five. His life was dramatically changed after losing his four-year-old granddaughter, Alana, in an accident. This shifted his focus to supporting the grieving community and those who care for them. He is a speaker and educator on various aspects of grief, including self-care, challenges faced by grieving grandparents and men, couples grief, bereavement care, and suicide intervention. He developed the Grieve Method, offering practical and biblical tools for navigating grief for grievers and caregivers. Oh, I can't even read that without just what a heart-centered offer. Oh, I thank you. thank you. Yeah, I'm excited to learn more and to dive into this. So speaking of heart, you said that before coming to Peaceful Profits, you didn't really have a business. You had heart work that you were doing. So tell us more about that. Yeah, I mean, kind of, as you said in my intro bio that I started serving the grieving community literally months after my granddaughter passed away tragically in an accident. I was in seminary at the time. I had just joined seminary in 2015 and she passed away 2016. And I started looking for resources, trying to find a way to help my family, myself get on a healing journey and couldn't find any. Mm. And so I kind of just dove in and started writing and started doing some research and piecing things together. And I just wanted to serve the grieving community. I wanted to serve me, yeah. grieving grandparents and Grieving men, the kind of the everybody thinks they're the ignored griever, but the fir, especially with child loss, the further you are away from being the birth mother, the less care you get, and that's not a knock on that. That's just the naturally how it goes. Yeah. And so you're thinking as a grieving male grandparent, how far am I away from that inner circle of care, right? And I started serving that community and. It was hard work, and I call hard work work you would do whether you get paid or not. And I call food work, right? Food that you go buy groceries with. Yeah. And so it, it really started off as hard work, and it was kind of a side gig because I had a full time job working for a nonprofit ministry. So it was comfortable there, but I knew it had value. And that's kind of what converted it later on into what it is now. But yeah, it was always hard work and I've always been willing for it to be hard work if it had to be, you know, if, if people just decided there's no financial value in this, but, you know, somebody needs to help, I'm going to help. Yeah. Uh, and it kind of, so I've been doing that since 2016 and I'm also a fire and police chaplain. So I'm, I tell people, I'm probably one of the only few people that you call that you know that gets called by 911 instead of the other way around. And so 911 will call me and say, hey, we have something happened. It's at this address. How soon can you get here? Wow. And I grab my bag and I go. Uh, so I've been doing that that work since 2016. And man, that's what hard work is to me. It's from the heart. And um, I know there's a need for it. But yeah, that's what I do. Yeah. Okay. I love that. I think that's so powerful. And I I wonder, the question that comes up for me is that sometimes when we have work that is so personal and dealing with such tender emotions, it can be almost hard to charge money for it. And so it could be, I can see how in some ways, like mindset ways, it would be easier to keep this heart work as right. heart work versus a business. And so was that an issue for you? Were you concerned about making that shift? I'll say it's less of an issue now. I don't, I don't know if I'll ever get to the point where it's not an issue because people will call me out of the blue and say, I have a grieving friend. Can you talk to him? I'm not going to give them a coaching plan. No, I'm. here's my phone number. Have your friend call me. Right. Um, and if it turns into something, it does. But that's never the intent. Yeah. Someone cared enough and thought about me enough to say, Bradley can help my friend. And how dare I now say, oh, well, here's my pricing chart. Right. And so it's, there's going to always be some of that. But and, you know, so I always struggle with that. And I've been in ministry and working through churches as church leadership 
for probably as long as I can remember. So there's always that too, right? The gospel is free and Yeah. ministry is free. So it's, it's always some of that that's going to linger. But I also know that this has value that people are willing to pay for, especially being trained on how to care for the grieving, right? A lot Yes. of people want to do it based because they have a heart for it, but they don't have the knowledge base to go along with the heart. So I know there's a value there. And that's kind of where my food work comes into play, more so in training and speaking, not necessarily caring for the grieving, right? And so that's how I was able to kind of lean into the food work aspect of it that way, where I can still serve the grieving community, community directly through workshops and speaking and things like that, but helping those that want to care for the grieving community get the knowledge and the foundation to serve them better. And so that's why it was so easy to make that conversion. Okay, that makes sense. And I think that's a really smart way to go about it. So along those lines, can you talk about how you have developed your business and some of the steps into making choices like this and, and growing this into a business? Yeah, I mean, you know, past all the legal stuff and the documentation and all that, right, that you got to go through to make yourself an LLC and all that. Uh, a lot of what I've done is kind of try to remain professional in my look and branding and all those things across all social media. That was kind of an easy thing right off the bat because I am, my talent is I'm an artist and graphic designer. That was my undergrad degree in Okay. graphic and multimedia design. So the look and feel and the professional was always easy for me. Because I could just go design a book cover right now. I don't have to call anybody. Right. I can make my own flyers, you know, make my own graphics. And so that was very important. But then also having the mindset of everything is beta. Get that content out in front of people. Let it serve them. And good things will come back. I always have lived by the motto, if you want to call it that, influence before income. So I'll join grief care groups and become a moderator and become an admin. And nobody knows I have a business. I'm here to serve. That's that's all I'm here to do. And and it's always influence, influence, influence. Then it's like, well, can you come speak at our conference? Do you do this at so-and-so? Can you come train our staff? Well, actually, I do have a business that does that, right? It's never, hey, this is Bradley, the business guy. Yeah. And I, I, that has served me well, and it makes it an easy transition for me. But when I said everything is beta when it comes to business, because I'm a researcher by nature, I, would, I have tons of stuff that has never seen the light of day as far as content, because Yeah. I'll create it. It's in a folder, never use it. And so the biggest hurdle for me in establishing a business is that everything is beta, get it out. Oh, that had a typo. Okay, fix the typo, reload it. That's version two. Right. And another thing that has helped me so much, I would I would always fear because it was hard work initially that I would somebody doesn't want it. Right. Because when it's when it's hard work, it hurts your heart when people don't Yeah, want it or yeah. don't take advantage of it. Right. <clears throat> but a person told me, they said, everything that you don't post is guaranteed not to get a response. At True. least if you do post, yeah, no response can happen, but then massive response can happen and everything in between. So that was a huge thing for my business, just getting things out, um, looking professional across everything, leaning into influence before income, just serve, 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 give it all away because people are even willing to pay for things you give away, right? Yeah. Um, and I just leaned on that, which, you know, kind of creates kind of going back to the first question, creates that hard dynamic sometime between heart and food. It's like, cause I give it all away. I'm like, no, just go over there. You can find it over there. You don't have to pay me for it. But I'm Yeah. like, wait a minute, I got to buy groceries. <laughs> <laughs> right. right. And they're willing to pay for it because they they've seen value in it. And so, yeah, th that was some of the things that I did to kind of, um, lean into business. You got to do business-like things. Up here on my board in front of me, I have 
what are you doing today to make money? Right. Cause I'm a solopreneur. Yeah. And then over here I have, if I don't have the business I want, it's my fault because I built it. Mm. Okay. And then I have pictures of my family and my grandsons all over. And it's like, so I don't come up here and veg out every day. I come up here and work, but I have a home office. So it's like, wait a minute. If I'm not doing something to create income today, what, why am I sitting behind this desk? Right. And if something's not going well in my business, it's my fault because I created the business that I have. So what am I doing or not doing to support it? So those are big things for me. Those are huge. I love that personal accountability and personal responsibility. And there's a few things that you said in here that I, I just wish we could, that everyone who came into Peaceful Profits knew because this idea of everything is beta, you guys, I hope you're hearing this. Everything is beta is so powerful because like you said, I mean, if you get it out there, it might flop, but if you don't get it out there, it's already right. flopped, right? right? It just, it it can't influence anyone. It can't do what it's meant to do if you don't put it out there. And so I love everything is beta. It, it frees, it frees you up. So what would you say to someone who struggles with that? Because we see that a lot. You know, we right. tell people just get something out there, just put it out there. And then they're like, oh, but it's not ready. What would you say to that person? I, I used to have perfection paralysis and being a designer, right? It's like, tweak that to the left, tweak it to the right. Yeah. And then something fell in my spirit one day and not to go all biblical and spiritual on you, but that's part of who I am too. But it's like, God gave me something to give to the world. And the longer I delay putting it out into the world, people are suffering. That's bluntly what it is. Yeah. So how dare I sit here trying to tweak and get the right color blue <sighs> on this flyer when the content can literally save someone's life mm. or in other cases, change their business or change their marriage or change a relationship. And I'm yeah. worried about the font size. I'm, I'm trying to find the perfect script font. And it's like, that's four days now that that thing could have been done. And all of the people that could have saw that for four days didn't see it. That's a heavy burden, especially in the kind of thing that I do. So I, when I think of something, if I have time to create it and if I got to burn a little midnight oil and get it done by the time everybody gets up the next morning, that's what I do. And I put it out. Whether it's a black and white Google Doc, it, it doesn't matter. The content is the king, yeah. right? And just get it out. Let people not click on it. Let two people click on it. Let some third or fourth party down the friendship line, see it. And if it changed that one person's life, that Google doc was enough. Yeah. They didn't care that it wasn't pretty. They the, don't. Content they, yeah. the content they read helped them. And so now that's, that's a constant struggle for me too, because I'm still that designer. I'm still the, uh, the moody artist. <laughs> I got some of that in me. And so I, I still struggle with that. So I'm not perfect with that, but I'm a lot better with it. Good. Oh, I love that so much. I think that's really, really good to hear. Now, one other thing that I want to ask you that you said that I thought was really good is this idea of just influence before income and continuing to just give and give and give. What would you say to people who say, I'm giving and I don't have the food, you know, the the food work. I'm not right. bringing in money and it becomes this almost fear based thing how can you give you know how do you manage that right. when there's that need I, I mean bluntly honest <clears throat> it was a lot easier when this was a side gig right yeah. yeah um it was a lot easier when i didn't have when i had other things that would could sustain it when my job was the angel investor for my hard work it was a lot easier then yeah but i say we have to be willing to do other things to come alongside of it, right? Can you make some digital products for five or $10? Can you go work at a big box store? I mean, what are you willing to do to bring money in while this thing is growing? And for a while, I mean, you know, we're full disclosure here and I'm just that kind of person because whatever I say, I hope can help somebody. 
I have I had resumes out there and I'm working my dream, but I have resumes out there and I'm willing to be bivocational to make this work. I'm willing if this falls off and doesn't have several good months, I can go bag groceries. I can go park cars because I've been there before. For the greater good of my family, I'm willing to go back there. I'm not going to ride this horse until we're both out in the middle of the desert and I can't find anything, Yeah. right? This will go back to hard work. I'll go get a 40-hour gig and life goes on. I'm going to still serve in this capacity. And because when people say failure is not an option, it is. <laughs> Failure is an option, right? yeah. Failure can happen. But how are you going to grow? How are you going to learn from it? And what are you willing to do to make your dream work? And so when I go into different communities now, because even when I was, used to do graphics and I didn't realize I was doing this, but I would make graphic, I would do graphic tutorial videos and I was called Bradley Teaches. That's still a lingering business out there now where I help some people with that. But I would always open up my videos and I would say, hey, this is Bradley, Bradley Teaches, also known as Alana's Pawpaw. That's my and nobody knew that my granddaughter had passed away. Mm. Yeah. They just figured, oh, he's a he's a grand girl dad, right? Or how Yeah. would they call it then? And what was odd is that leaders and church leaders and pastors just kind of started coming to me for graphics. It was like it's just something about your demeanor, this and whatever. And and then we started talking, then they learned my story. And it was like that, oh, you know, that that's why that's why I was attracted to you, right? And I was never trying to sell them nothing. I was just making graphics videos. And so that's what I mean by influence before income. When, when you put that out into the world and just do right by people, it'll come back, you know? Yeah. And um, so, yeah, and you just, you just got to be willing to do what it takes to work your dream, even if your dream is part of something else for a little while, right? Entrepreneurs are the only people that'll do a hundred hours a week to get paid what their 40 hour a week job used to do. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And it's like, Hey, so we'll make, make your job, make your business, your part-time job for a little while and get a part-time job. Yeah. I Right. love that. And so, Yeah. Sometimes that's what it takes. That's what yeah. it takes. And especially that's what it takes in order to not be desperate and needy in your business, but to continue being able to influence in the way that you're in alignment with that allows you to give. So I like, I, I really appreciate you sharing that and that transparency. Now, some of your recent business successes include some exposure on a bigger scale. So talk to us about that and what's been going on. Right. Yeah, what's been crazy, and, and you know, I learned this uh, in the group is podcasting. I mean, I had a podcast a hundred years ago. I call it a hundred years ago. Uh, not long after I started doing the grief work, I started a podcast called Good Grief with Bradley Benson. My perfection paralysis killed it Okay. because all the guests that would come in, their quality wasn't as good as mine. You know, I couldn't hear their audio. I was like, I'm not going to put this out there because there's stuff, you know, but I, I knew my stuff was like too much, you know, but anyway. And so I did podcasting a little while ago from this side of it, but then reintroducing myself to the podcast world as a guest and almost as a professional guest Yeah. has been crazy for me. Uh, probably the biggest one that I've done so far is on Parenting 411, which is a large, uh, a large podcast of all parents, and they have never spoken about grief. And so I, I did a cold call out to the host and they were like, This is a very unique topic. Parents need to hear this. And it was it was more so how to help a grieving child that may be grieving from a loss or whatever. And so I went in and I did that. And it was amazing. It was like crazy amazing. And that whole new audience of parents, because I'm I'm like grief, 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 grief. But no, grief is all, in all kinds of communities. Yeah. And uh, that community really embraced me. I'm going to be doing more with that host and collaborating with them. So it's very exciting. Another one that's that's actually grief related is a widower's um, podcast, which is actually ranked number two in the world for that uh, subject matter. Yeah. And I did a thing on there and the host loved it and 
wants to collaborate and share a stage with me, wants me to come speak with them and do different things. So, and I'm not a widower, but at a, at a level, right? Grief is grief, you know, at a level. Yes. So I couldn't speak specifically to that, but just kind of encouraging and helping that community, you know, as they go on their grief journey was amazing also. So those were like two big ones from just doing a simple thing, right? Hey, I'm Bradley. I talk about this. I, I want to help your audience and yeah. maybe I'll be a fit for your show. And well, it's worked out great. Yeah. I think one thing that I hope listeners are taking away from this is you know, it, we get sometimes stuck in our niche and it is very easy to just go, okay, I'm talking to all the grief podcasts and you're going through the list of grief podcasts, but there are so many people right. who are grieving or who may run across it in the future. I mean, right. grief is going to touch all of our lives. And so listening to a parenting podcast or going kind of outside of that first circle of your niche and finding those people is just a brilliant strategy. Yeah. And as a podcast host, you know, to have someone pitch them something a little different is actually really, really powerful. Like, oh, yes, this isn't the same as these other 10 things I've been pitched this week. And so I think that's a really powerful strategy, too. So I love that. Now, to looking at your business, big picture, what do you hope to be able to grow your business into? And what's kind of the long term plan for you? Yeah, I mean, outside of the, I guess, kind of obvious cliche thing of legacy, uh, what I I would really love to have more like hearted, like minded people come alongside of me and have a team mm -hmm. of trainers or people that may want to be certified grief coaches out in the world, because I can't do it all alone. Yeah, but I know my way is not the only way I feel it's probably one of the best ways, but other people that have that same mindset, I want to be part of that community. I would love that. And, you know, I think from being a designer for so long before this, trying not to trade time for money so much, right? So as much automated, uh, autopilot things as I can do, recorded classes and things of that nature, where you just log into the academy and find the things that can play this at your church, play this in your men's ministry meeting. And they just kind of a la carte, do what they want. So yeah. the kind of blend of automation and a team would be awesome. Cause I, I love being in front of people and I love teaching. I don't, I would never give that part up, but just having as much free reign to do more of that by automating other things would be awesome. So that's, I mean, you know, I'm not never going to be as big as Coca-Cola anything like that. Right. <laughs> but I mean, just, you know, but, build real freedom. Yeah. And hey, I'm going to take the next four months off. You know, yeah. I'm not going to do any speaking engagements. The team can train other people. And I'm just going to not go anywhere. I'm just, just not going to do nothing. You know, I can sit at home for four months, right? And just see what the boys want to do. Because part of my story also, which, you know, like I said, I'm a full disclosure kind of guy, fully transparent. We are raising uh, Alana's brothers. They've been with us since the age of two and six. She was four when she passed away. So they've been with us now for the last eight years. And them seeing me have a business and them seeing me do these things and serving people, um, I love that, right? Yeah. But I also want them to see the freedom that a successful business brings. And so I'm building towards that. That and There's no problem with them being employees one day. There's nothing wrong with that. But if they even have an inkling that this is what this is what I can do on my own, so to speak, or what I can create, and this is what legacy is, right? Because I'm literally leaving this for my children's children at yeah. one day, and so uh, that that's what I really want it to be. That's awesome. I love that. So you've painted a very clear picture for us of what success looks like for you. And one of the things that you said is that the road to capital S success is paved with many lowercase s successes. So what are some of the lowercase s successes that will get you to that legacy that you want to? Yeah. To and, and I think it's some of the things I've kind of mentioned throughout is like the, you know, the everything is beta, um, getting that content out, being, you know, realizing that um, you got to look in different ways to find success, even the things that seem not to fit, right? Like you were saying, just the podcasting thing, because I love to talk. 
<laughs> so that's been an easy one for me, right? And then digging out all that old content, getting it out there. Those are little successes because five people like this guide. So let me make another guide, but target it towards church leaders yeah. and see. Let me just put this post out, what I call I'm thinking about post. Hey, I'm thinking about doing a class on this for $37. Interested? You know, and just do things like that. Um, those have been little S successes along the way. Um, and then also seeing that something that doesn't look like a success on the surface that could have been a failure or a flop is a learning experience. I've had a lot of those little S's, right? So, you know, you might spend eight or nine hours making this guide or something that you want to give away for free to build your email list. And you think you're going to get a thousand responses and there's zero response. And it's like, okay, what did I do wrong? Yeah. So I can learn from that and not do another thing like that. Or how can I fail quicker? Yes. Right. That's, that's a success. It's like a set of an eight hour thing. Let me do something. Let me dedicate two hours to it. I like and if that. it's the same kind of flop or whatever else, okay. I save six hours yeah. <laughs> to get to this quick failure that I can, you know, that can be a little S success. So those things are kind of just all the way down the road as uh, have, have helped me. Yeah. Those are really good. Now, you've alluded to, you've done lots of things that haven't always worked. And I think for most entrepreneurs, we can say the same. So how do you keep up hope when you are not seeing that success that you, you had hoped to get? Yeah, that that's a hard one. Uh, Cause it's easy to get down when it's like, man, that's, that's four hours wasted. You know, it's, yeah. it's hard to do that, but believing if you, if you truly I call it knowing, right? So if you truly know that this is not a flighty thing, this is not something I'm just going to try for the next month, you truly believe this is the thing, hope is in that because yeah. you know that it's down the road. It's not today, might not be tomorrow, but I know this is successful. I know people find value in it. I just got to keep going until they realize I'm here. Because uh, the big thing for me, I learned that a lot of my not successes were because I was having secret sales, I call it, right? I was not putting stuff in front of people. Yeah. You know, it's like if nobody knows you're selling something, nobody knows you have a program, why would you think you'd have success? <laughs> and I had to be hard with myself about that, right? So it's like, okay, if I'm going to commit to putting stuff out, I have to believe that it's going to be successful because I can't use that as an excuse anymore. So eliminating the excuses and things like that and aiming toward hope and sustaining yourself is kind of how I, how I do it. And now every day is not a, it's not an easy day because every day, you know, that clock keeps ticking, but you know, the cash register is not ringing, yeah. but it's okay. No, I'm, I'm going to build another relationship. I'm going to get a call. They're going to call back. I'm going to get an email. I just got to keep building relationships, treat these people right. They may not be my client, but a friend of theirs might, an associate of theirs might, because somebody's going to call them and say, hey, we have this thing going on right now. Do you know anybody? And I want to be that person that somebody says, I know a guy, right? Mm -hmm. And that, you know, so, but when, when, that, when, that, when that switch flips, I'm going to be ready. And that's what keeps me hopeful too. I'm not going to have to get ready. I'm going to be ready because I'm going to be prepared while I'm waiting. I tell people all the time when people say, oh, I'm waiting on something. Most people see waiting as sedentary. I'm going to sit and wait. I see waiting more so like a waiter at a restaurant. Mm. They wait by moving. Yeah. They're always looking for who needs their water filled, who needs more, you, who need who dropped their napkin on the floor to give me a give him a new one. That's what kind of waiter I am. I so like that's that. what keeps me hopeful. It's like while I'm waiting for the right for the next thing to hit, I'm gonna be waiting like a waiter waits. Yeah, gonna be you taking know, what action. Needs, yeah. yeah. So Oh, that's so good. I love this. This has been this is just an inspirational conversation. I feel like there's so many good things in here. To finish up, any final advice that you would give to others who are just starting out in their business? Yeah, I mean, to me, it's trust the process of business. 
I would also say get help. I know we're a lot of us are so so you know solopreneurs and things like that, but you got to get help. Nobody nobody wins alone. Um, be willing to invest. Treat your business like a business, right? So get up in the morning, get groomed, come sit behind your desk with your coffee, and act like you're going to somebody's office if you're home officing, right? Come up here and treat it like a business. You know, you don't sit at, you didn't sit at nobody else's job on your phone all day, you know, TikToking the day away, right? Yeah. You worked because you was afraid somebody's going to walk by your desk <laughs> and see you not working, right? So act like that in your business. Um, and and you, you got to trust the process. You got to believe in it because if you don't believe in it, go get a nine to five, which is also noble and just have a hobby. Don't worry about getting paid for it. But if you're going to have a business, Treat it like a business. Take care of your business like stuff. So that's what I say. And, you know, I, I tell people tough love is still love. So I don't give a lot of mushy kind of answers, but it's like at a certain level, it's like you just got to do the work of business, you know, yeah. trust it, get help. And if you're going to pay somebody for help, take the advice. Definitely. <laughs> or you're wasting money, right? <laughs> um, and so, yeah, just treat it like a business and get help, try to collaborate, um, be good to people, you know, Yeah, and it'll come okay. back. That's awesome. That's so great. Now, I appreciate everything that you've shared to wrap up. Where can people find you and, and your work? Yeah. The easiest way to find me is on my website, which is my name, bradleyvinson.com. Uh, I'm that same name on Facebook. I have a Facebook page and a business page and my mug is on all of them. That's the easy way to find me. But I'm always available by DM or email. But I just, you know, I'm I'm out there just trying to put content out to bless people. Um, more people know me by serving them by my business, which is okay. But I know at some point they need to know me as a available asset. And so I'm still growing into that. But yeah, but that's the easy way to find me is just by my name. Um, and yeah. Okay, wonderful. Well, you guys go and check that out. Bradley, thank you for everything that you've shared with us today. And thanks everyone for listening.